because there are a lot of things going on on Twitter at the moment. But one of them is uh, Wordle, this game where you can guess a five-letter word. And I thought, okay, that'd be an interesting challenge. Can we implement it uh, in a spreadsheet, <laughs> obviously, um, without VBA as well? This is just going to be uh, neat. So we set a random number up here to generate a new word, and then let's, let's start guessing them. So hotel, uh, that's telling me there's an H in it. Uh, no other letters. Um, shirt, maybe. Oh, it begins with an S and H. Uh, oh. Rug. Something like that begins with that. I don't know. Um, I'll not sit and play it fully, but uh, if I could figure this out in real time, I would do that. Uh, and so it works. And I thought, well... Let's not just do a straight up tutorial about this. Let's maybe um, just unpack the code behind this uh, and show you what this can do. You kind of think a bit programmatically about what's going to happen. Uh, so let's uh, get my grid lines, headings, the formula bar back on and uh, go back and hide a couple of things. Oops, I need to actually also unprotect my sheet. So let's unhide. That I'll show where that's doing soon. Unhide that. You can see, oh, it's such a shack. That's the answer. Uh, and unhide some stuff down here. That's telling me what these letters when I'm striking them out. And then I'm going to unhide my word list. So the start of this is really you've got to find the right word list. This was actually quite difficult to do because some uh, you get lots of different word lists, crossword solvers and stuff like that. And some of them are short, some of them are way too long. They might have thousands and thousands uh, of five letter words in, but they're actually random letter combinations and they don't work. And this, I can't remember where I found it. I think it was a plain text file I found hosted. Uh, this worked really well because it contains most actual words without going into random letter combinations. Uh, it's fairly complete. And it's also, it's already randomized. So if I type in a random number up here, um, oops, the number's too high. That's 5757, five, seven. let's go 5757, seven, five, that's the top one, pupil. Um, so it's not going to be from A to Z, for instance. Um, so what's this happening? So the first thing we need to do is select a number. I've given the uh, list of words here uh, a named range called word list. It's the only named range I've used, which is quite unusual, but it's in there as one well. anyway. Uh, and I've also used it as sort of a semi-dynamic thing because I've just inserted the entire column. That's what that's referring to. And you try to count here. So when it says try and round a number between one and count, count A being the function to count the number of cells with contents in. So that will give me the list, uh, the total length of that list. And I'm only putting the random number in here randomly because if you do a uh, rand or rand between, uh, it updates every time you press the return button. So in order to refresh it, you would need to use a VBA or a macro type thing. Um, and I wasn't going to do that. So you have to put in the number randomly for this version. And it will look it up using the index uh, function. Um, you could use XLOOKUP or VLOOKUP for that. It doesn't really matter, uh, but index works just fine. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five here, because these are the positions of it. And so what I've got is a mid function to try and split this up into individual letters. And mid tells you where tech what text cell it is so that's a3 there the start number which is going to be one two three or four or five and then give return me one character so if i turned that into two for instance it would give me two characters worth uh, now i have covered in something previously about how to do that with uh, a spill formula in Excel now, but I haven't bothered in here. I've just done this as one, two, three, four, five, because it gets reused. And I know I'm not going to extend this out of five. So I'm not going to really make that dynamic or anything like that. I could make this based on the length of the word and just extend it to six letters if I wanted to, but it's not necessary. And so now here are the inputs, uh, and those are going to be the guesses. Now, what am I doing here to create this? Uh, well, this is a monster formula, but I will try and break down um, 
what it's actually doing. Basically, it is attempting, if you can see here, I'm extracting this as a mid, if the mid of that equals the thing up there, and then I return yes. And then I'm saying if that's false, I'm giving a much more complicated formula here. It's a, in an if is error match. Um, I've got that mid thing to extract the letter out again um, without reusing a second cell. Uh, if you can find that in this list here, so there's a match function that tries to find um, this text in that array that I've opened up um, all five of those letters separately into an array. If you can find that in there, it will return a number. If it doesn't find it in there, it returns an error. So I use the isError function uh, and isError returns true or false. So I can stick that in an if statement. So if it is an error, it means it hasn't found it, it brings up n. And then if it does find it, m, which I've used for maybe. Uh, now, what I've then done is if I come up to home and go to my conditional formatting, uh, I've made it turn red, green, or yellow, depending on whether it's yes, no, or maybe, which is what the N, Y, and M are for. And that applies to that entire grid there. Uh, to give it a little bit of an effect, I've actually just created a semi-transparent beveled thing to go over the top. It makes it look a little bit more like the emojis that you'd see on Twitter. All right. Then, is it correct or not? Uh, that is simply just count if, count the number, um, count the number of yeses in here. So count if that range is equal to yes. And then a little bit more conditional formatting. So let's go to manage rules. Yes, hang on, let's just bring that up. Here we go, icon set. That's just a standard icon set. If it is greater or equal to five, tick. If it's greater or equal to three, give it the little exclamation mark. If it's less than that, put the X. Now to the right of that, I've actually got another. Um, this is something that checks whether your input is valid or not. So if I put just hot instead of hotel, it says not five letters. So I basically put it if the length is not five, um, not five letters. So this is means difference here. Uh, and then if that checks out and it says it is five letter words, it tries to match it into the word length list and returns, if that produces an error, the is error triggers, it goes not a word. Um, I've also put an and function in here with not blank. So if I got rid of that and, it would actually say not five letters and trigger automatically when here. So um, I put that and function in. Uh, I will say in Excel, ifs and and statements and if else's is actually really difficult. This is really pushing what this thing is designed to do. Um, I would not recommend doing a lot of nested if statements with Excel. This is not the software to use for it. This is just playing around with it to see what it can do, not what it is designed uh, to do. <laughs> so that all in mind, what have I got over here? This is doing the same sort of thing. I'm breaking that up with a mid function um, to produce the, the same thing. And this word, if I didn't have concat here, I'm just going to delete that briefly. I'll just show you how that works. This is what this will spill to the right. There you go. H-O-T. In fact, I'll put hotel back in here. H-O-T-L. But if I then wrap that in concat, that concatenates it, and the spill disappears. It just actually, what this has done is it splits the word up and then concatenates it back together. But what you can do then is add an if statement. So I'm just going to put that back here. Um, the if, this range here, this, this range in the middle equals no, yes, concatenated, if not concatenating and nothing. And then I'll put an ampersand above. So what this actually does is this keeps a running total of the number of letters that have been striked out as red with no. So you can see all of these letters, S, H, C, K, I don't know, so well, it, maybe I've reused them a couple of times, 
um, but this should be a running total of all the letters that have been um, declined by it. And that is what this grid is counting here, because I'm seeing if I can find a particular letter from this keyboard uh, in this column. And I've done a little bit of an indirect function to try and find the highest one, the latest one that happens. Um, and if it return, uh, and if it does find it, it'll return a number. If not, it'll return an error. And I've used that if error again just to return zero. And uh, this is the complicated bit because this is conditional formatting. Go wrap rules here. I've used use a formula where this is true. And I've done if b18 is greater than zero. Okay, that, so what this is doing is if this wasn't that function, if this was five or something, it's found five copies of it, or it's found it in the fifth position, it doesn't matter. Um, it will turn gray and strike out. That's a conditional formatting. And using this relative positioning with conditional formatting can be a bit tricky. You've got to go to, like say, a new rule, use a formula to define it, set that cell, remove the dollar signs, I'm going to format that, let's just fill it with red for now, just to show it, okay that, now it's greater than five, it'll do that, exactly the same as before, and we drag along, and then just do fill formatting only, it will take that conditional formatting across. So you will have to do that maybe in two directions. Oop. Oh, I've now copied all those letters. If I do fill more formatting only, it goes back to where it was. So probably go back to that rule, just make sure I've got the grayed out version. So that is a little bit about how you can use a spreadsheet to actually build something like this. It is a small game, it actually does work. You just wanna hide your answers hide a couple of uh, columns that are helping you and what you can do is hide even the fact that it's a spreadsheet by getting rid of all of those uh, you can hide the word list I don't think it helps you too much anyway unless you manually go searching for it and then just review protect the sheet lock that so now we can't actually select anything except these inputs and what was it again it's pupil wasn't it something like that and there we go i've got a couple of extra bits of formula just to um fill this in as all ticks uh so that has all been assembled kind of piece by piece by trialing it and saying okay well what do i need it to do next and then adding maybe an extra bit in and it is it's incredibly fiddly to do with excel so this is more like a a proof of concept you weird um yeah, this is what you can do if you want to have a bit of fun with it and try to learn a bit of programming without doing just all programming. It would certainly be easier to implement in Python or JavaScript or whatever. You could be a bit more flexible. And I think if you did did a double letter, I th I'm not sure how this quite reacts to double letters when it finds something twice. Um, the actual proper game that's, that's going around probably handles that a little bit better. Um, I suppose a few other things we could do, like if we go unprotected again, um, let's put all these back on, unhide that, where I've got this conditional formatting being read from a separate grid, I suppose I could also do this grid separately as well, and then reference that, and then I could highlight the let put the letters in here and take the conditional formatting from somewhere else. This is all about making the conditional format um, based on whether it's uh, returning a particular number. Ah, yes, that reminds me. Um, you can probably see these cells are empty. They do contain something, but they do not display. And that is really that's a really useful trick. We've gone. To, I've added in a more uh, custom format here so if you go to format cells go to custom and type in three um, semicolons uh, what that basically does is translate this into a date but it doesn't set the format of the date and so the kind of the formatting options kind of gives up and doesn't display anything at all 
um, so it's a good hack if you want to just use conditional formatting to display something and not actually see the number or the letter behind it and therefore you just get the color and then I'll just put this grid over the top of it um, it'd be cool if each cell had its own individual border um, but the borders are shared with each cell so if you did the top right of the cell got highlighted it would be the bottom of that one and the left of that one so you can't quite create a bevel, bevel effect um, that's very reproducible in Excel uh, it is it's I mean it's, it's an accountancy bit of software oh, come on what do you want from me here um, but that's how you do it that's how you can implement a small game in it without VBA